Morning guys. Yes, that is a Christmas wreath. <laughs> I love Christmas and no, I am not a pagan. Um, I just think that celebrating Christmas and it, for the right reasons, the true reasons, is just such a, a great way to spread and share Christianity. But some of you aren't religious and that's fine too. You can be pagans. Um, but I, I also just wanted to remind you guys, so wall control, a lot of people mention how organized I look. I have these walls on multiple walls in our shop. Um, we actually even use wall control walls when we're doing uh, trade show biz. So uh, these these walls, these panels, all the hooks and stuff that you see are sold by wall control, wallcontrol.com. You could get 15% off uh, on checkout by just putting in your NASA 15. Um, and I'd you know, if you're thinking about an organization system, I hope you consider that, and I hope you consider using my 15% off code so I can convince them to send me more product. I love it. So I had a question the other day on our channel about my favorite uh, flashlight. So I thought I would do a video. Um, I do have maybe a favorite flashlight, but I, I thought I'd do a video explaining some of the stuff that we have for lighting purposes. And, and most importantly, you know, if, uh, SHTF really does happen. It's so much easier to say the words than it is to say the acronym, but I can't say the words on YouTube. Uh, but if that really did happen, you know, what lights would be the most beneficial to you? Because um, some flashlights would be impractical in, in that type of situation. If you lost everything, if, if there was an EMP or, you know, the world went to pot tomorrow, what would be your best source of lighting and, and the best resource that you can possibly have? Um, and to be honest with you, I found that in my research, it had nothing to do with flashlights. Now, some of these flashlights that I'm gonna show you could actually work for quite some time in that scenario. But uh, what I wanted to start out with is actually more of a traditional method of lighting. And my wife and I, you know, we, we like studying some of the old ways of doing things when it comes to farming, when it comes to a lot of different things, because people back before the Industrial Revolution were quite self-sufficient. They were able to create their own things and um, operate just fine. And so when you think about the ultimate form of being prepared, having that knowledge and those skills are what will get you through uh, periods of time like that. So, with that being said, my first two flashlights. So this one here is uh, just something you, you, you've typically seen this. Um, and we have these because we do have a lot of hurricanes where we live. Now, I didn't want to put this candle into this. This is one I took off of our dining room table. But you could drip some wax in there and make sure that that uh, stays nice and sturdy. But this type of candle is great inside a house because you can walk around, hold your hand just like so and, and block the wind as you walk from room to room. It's going to emit a nice amount of light around you just from a single candle and it's really all that you really need to be able to see in your home in the dark at night. The other one that I have here is a, this is called a campaigner's lantern. Uh, this is something that was typical You'd see it a lot in the Civil War period. Yeah, it actually dates back even further than that. Um, now this type of lantern is made of tin and it has reflective material on the backside and a, a glass pane on the front. I'll post a link to where you can get these. You can get these from a lot of sutlers. Sutlers are people who uh, make products for uh, Civil War, Revolutionary War, um, you name it, different types of reenactments. And this particular one that I'm using, the, the, the settler that I found that has something similar to this, uh, is actually a UK settler for um, one of the, the, the British, uh, they, they make a lot of different um, war uniforms and things for different periods, and they have, they have one just like this. But you have basically on the front a little hinge that allows you to slide your glass up and down to light the candle on the inside. Now this thing you can walk around with and it's and it almost completely blocks any wind from getting in there. There are two holes on the back side. I've seen these with holes up top. I would not get one of those. I would get one that has uh, some, some holes at the bottom and then this one just has a little vent system at top. 
a couple of reasons for that. If wind does get in here, uh, it dissipates the wind before it hits the flame if the candle is full. Um, and obviously this little flap at the top keeps wind coming in from the top. Uh, the heat moving through the candle also helps uh, keep it burning and, and burning brighter. The, the, the idea behind the tin is that it reflects the light out into one direction. So whereas this candle is just, you know, creating a glow, this one is actually projecting the light just like a flashlight would. Now the great thing about candles versus oil or gas, which came after the Industrial Revolution, is that you can make candles on your own. We use beeswax candles and we don't use any other candle in our household and mainly because beeswax candles, they burn a lot cleaner than you know your typical candle at the store. Those candles actually emit fumes that are harmful if you breathe them in. Beeswax candles are, uh, they're perfectly clean. You don't see as much residue, it won't build up on your glass uh, by using a beeswax candle. So there are a lot of benefits to beeswax candles other than the health benefits, but the biggest benefit is that you can have bees on your property and harvest your own wax and make your own candles. If you don't have bees, something that we have is you can buy online cotton string for wicks, and you guessed it, beeswax. These are like little beeswax balls. And what you do with this beeswax is you put it into a double boiler and you just, you know, you dip your string into the wax as it melts and you create your own beeswax candles. And, you know, typically when you buy beeswax candles, they can be very expensive. So uh, I don't even know, I, I don't want to know what we paid per candle to buy the beeswax candles. But you can buy the beeswax and make your own candles um, relatively inexpensively. If you're, if you're into candles and things like that, definitely go with the beeswax candles. But it's a good thing to learn, you know, just to, to get the wax, learn how to make a candle. It could be a fun little craft, a hobby with the kids. Uh, when we make some candles, I'll shoot a video and show you how we do it. But the other thing that you're, that you're doing is you're resorting to something that you're completely able to do on your own. When we look at our property, one of the things that we want to do is, you know, have a spot for where we could have some cotton so that we can create things like cotton string. The other thing is that we want to have bees because if we have bees and we can scrape the wax and we can use the wax, beeswax can be used for so many incredible things. In this case, you can create candles and then you always have a lighting source. You can't depend on external resources for the energy to create the light in a situation where things really do get bad. Let's hope they don't ever get that bad, but hey, if they do, it's good to have stuff like this. And I really like these campaigner candles. I mean, I've had this for years. My, my dad and brother and I, um, we've done a lot of Civil War reenactment over the years. And so we've, we each have our own little lantern of some sort. I used to have one that I made out of wood with a kind of a mirror reflector on the back to push the light outward. But this is the best one that I have ever owned as far as its ability to uh, prevent drafts from blowing out the candle its ability to project the light. It's a very uh, state-of-the-art design for the time that it came out. This is the best way to blow it out. Now, when we go on to regular flashlights, um, these are typical flashlights that I think everybody has had in their house. Many of you probably have this. This is a mag light, uh, and it does have an LED bulb. This was my go-to light for some time. We have several of these in our house because even back in 2014 when we first bought our property, this was the light to go with. I mean, it was the most sturdy, the construction is a solid metal, but it's not as bright as some of the lights I'm going to show you. And the other problem is that it's battery dependent. Um, so even if you use rechargeable batteries, if your electricity is out for quite some time, Recharging something like this is a lot more difficult and it's not as bright as some of the other options that I have. For tactical reasons, you're gonna want something extremely bright. The mag light's not gonna do it. From a tactical purpose, you could whack somebody with this. And actually, when I was in college, this is an interesting story, there was an ice storm in Charlotte 
And um, I had gotten a phone call. Some of my roommates were out at a party, and apparently they flooded the apartment. I don't know how they did that. But I was the only college student that they knew that had a full-size shop vac. That's a completely other story. So they called me up, and I was hanging out by myself. I didn't want to go out and partake. And they asked me if I could come help clean up the situation that they had created. And so I got in the car and was driving out, and I grabbed one of my big mag lights as I was on my way out the door because I felt like it was necessary to have um, the, the proper equipment driving through icy roads probably 30 minutes to help go clean up this mess. And I get on the highway and uh, I wasn't on the highway very long until I saw something flickering up ahead and there weren't any, there were no people on the, on the roads because there was like an inch of ice on the roads. So it was a kind of a dangerous situation. As I approached, I realized that there was a car upside down in the back side of the car somewhere that something was starting to catch on fire. And as I drove by, I realized that there was a person hanging from a seatbelt upside down in the car. And so I pulled over and I was actually able to break their, um, their, their window open with the mag light. And as I broke the window open, uh, somebody else saw what was going on and, and stopped to help. We cut them out of their seatbelt with a pocket knife. And, um, you know, potentially, I don't know if that car would have caught on fire. I, I, I didn't actually hang around very long to find out. Uh, we got them out of the car. Um, he, they were acting conscious. More and more people started showing up, so I left. But that um, that is, you know, a great, <laughs> tribute to the mag light. These things are tough lights. And so if it's all you can have, it's all you can have. My, my biggest beef with these is they're not bright enough for tactical purposes and uh, they're bulky, very bulky. And again, the batteries. I don't wanna be dependent on um, regular alkaline bat batteries if something goes bad. Uh, this one here is a light that many of you have probably seen these became popular several years ago they've got like eight led bulbs in there and um, they operate off of AAA batteries i think there's just a little battery pack inside here i think it's got like three AAA batteries in there and these were really popular you saw a lot of these at lowe's hardware stores wherever you went it was kind of like the new technology there's nothing special about this light the AAA batteries die relatively quickly in my opinion um, they're not at all that bright for LED bulbs. They're definitely not as bright as a mag light. The construction quality, the metal that they're made out of is not very durable. When, you know, they, they feel cheap. There's nothing special about these lights, but they're a couple bucks. So that brings me on to newer technology. So when we have flashlights today, uh, the flashlights are no longer operated off of, you know, Duracell. Hertz. They're, they're crazy batteries. They're, they've added inverters inside of the flashlights to um, increase the power of the LED that's in the flashlights. So these things can get extremely bright. So we're no longer dealing with, you know, two, 300 lumens, but we're going up into the thousands. Uh, one of these flashlights goes up to 3,750 lumens. The other one goes up to about 2,100, 2,500 lumens. And then I've got one that still operates off of a battery, but it's my favorite flashlight that I use every day, so I threw it in here. Uh, the first one that I have here is the Warrior X-Pro Olight. Now, this is a light I've talked a lot about on our channel. This is a hundred and something dollar flashlight. Now, the great thing about this flashlight, and the reason why I have this flashlight and what I use it for, I don't use this very often, but I do use it. Um, this flashlight has a throw, which means that the beam of this flashlight can actually reach almost 2,000 feet away, 500 meters. And it has over 2,000 lumens on its high setting. So when you're out, if you've got cows, you've got livestock, you have things out in your fields, there's an intruder on your property that you're trying to hunt down. This thing has a throw in its beam that is almost impossible for somebody to escape or for you not to be able to see all the way across your fields to see where your animals are. That is what is so fantastic about this Olight, is its reach. It has two settings. One is just, you know, a, a normal flashlight setting, and then you, you have the second setting, which is your boom, your big setting. And those are it. Those are your two settings. This flashlight does have a tail 
uh, switch. So I believe you can get attachments from Olight if you're gonna put this on the end of a gun so that you can uh, use the click, your trigger click to uh, turn the light on and off. And again, it, it uses one of these 3.6 volt batteries, um, which are just insane. They, they offer a tremendous amount of power versus your 1.5 volt battery. These are 3.6 volts. Now, we, the thing about these batteries is that these are designed for high drain devices. So if you're going to be using this on its high setting, it's going to drain the battery fairly quickly. But most of the time that I use this light, I find what I'm looking for fairly quickly. Uh, I, I will say that it gets hot. Um, Shauna does not want our kids using this flashlight. It even says on the flashlight, hot surface. It gets very hot um, and that beam is very directed. So you're not gonna get like a widespread light around you, but what you will get is a very long, far reaching light beam. I think that if you have livestock, if you have a farm, if you have areas that you need to be able to see far away, um, this is a very essential light. It reminds me of, you know, when we were in uh, high school, we, I used to go to a summer camp up in Maine. And one of the events every year, we had different teams. One of the events was that the teams would all go out into the woods for a weekend and compete in a game of capture the flag. And uh, it's funny, we had flags around our waists because they were trying to prevent tackling. It never actually worked because we just tackle everybody anyway. And one of my buddies had a flashlight that I swear this thing was like 10 inches in diameter. And when he turned that on, you couldn't see anything running through the woods, but he could see everything. And everybody on this side of the light could see everything. So you have all these guys creeping up on camo on you and then all of a sudden, boom! And it would blind them to the point where we just run out and tackle them. It was like, you know, poaching fish or something. It was super easy. And so that's what this light reminds me of. It reminds me of that gigantic flashlight, what this light can do. So for such a little thing, it's got some serious power. But again, it's expensive. It's gonna cost you somewhere around 150 bucks. But that is the, um, the big thing about Olight is they, they, they also, these are made out of extremely durable construction. Um, I mean, it's a military grade metal that they've got on this, this flashlight. And so if you drop it, if you bang it, you wanna bang a window out with it, you can do it with this flashlight. It is a tactical flashlight. If you look at the, the, uh, the rim of the flashlight here, you do have um, some nice little nubs. So if, you, if somebody's breaking into your house, you shine this into their eyes and then boom, hit them. I mean, it's, it's got all sorts of fun little features like that. Again, it's an expensive flashlight and it gets really hot. Um, not so hot you can't touch it, but hot enough that it, it, it worries some people. Now, my favorite light is also an O-Light, and I say this is my favorite because of its size. This light actually goes up to 300 lumens, so it has two settings, a 100 lumen and a 300 lumen. Most of the time, 300 lumens is plenty for me. It's bigger than a mag light. This is the I5T EOS. Uh, I had to read it off of there, but it's made by O-Light. It's extremely small. It has a clip that is, is, is kind of, you know, a double clip scenario, and the last slide I'm gonna show you also has that. That allows me, I could put this on the brim of a hat, going this way, turn it on. I could also just clip it into my jeans, facing down. Um, so the, kind of having that double C clip or whatever they wanna call that on there is a nice feature. This particular light operates off of just a double A battery, but it is extremely bright for just a flashlight off or operating off of a AA battery. I'm not sure what they put in there that boosts the LED the way that it does, but it's, um, it's fantastic technology if you ask me. It is, um, I mean, this is light years ahead of this thing. I use this, I keep it in my pocket because of its size. It's so small, it's not much bigger than the battery that's in it. And I, I whenever I'm working, I always need a flashlight for something. I could use it on the low light, I could use it on the highlight. I just love it. It fits in my pocket. Now, to be completely honest with you, this light and this light, they were provided to me by Olight. I have never tried any other flashlight with this newer technology other than this light. 
I just picked this up and fell in love with it and you know haven't haven't tried anything else. Again, it's got really nice construction. It's made out of a similar metal as the Olight Warrior. Very durable light, and I use this on the daily. Uh, it, it's just such a, the quality of it, you know, the way it feels in your hands, the size. Sometimes I, I can't even remember what pocket I put in and I have to go fishing, it's so small. But that's something that I like in an EDC light. So now I've got my EDC light, I've got my beam, my spotlight to go find the cows, go find an intruder or whatever it is. You're not gonna escape this O-Light, I can tell you that. And I could blind the heck out of somebody with this O-Light if you put it on the end of a gun barrel. Um, this would be something that you could put on the end of a rifle because you're, you've got a 2,000 uh, foot reach. I mean, that's a serious reach. Uh, I don't think people realize, I can't even demonstrate it. I tried to fly the drone up and the, because the light has to reflect off of something on the ground, it's, it's hard to show you, and then the drone's camera doesn't um, get certain light at certain levels. It's hard to show you how far this thing actually reaches. Our 4K camera did a little bit of a better job displaying how far the, the beam actually reaches, but I can see all the way back to the back of our pastures. I can make out anything along the hillsides. Um, it is truly a fantastic uh, flashlight. One of, the, one of the, the better choices if you can afford it. This one is the most interesting flashlight to me. This is called a Thru-Night T2 flashlight. Now Thru-Night has uh, made a lot of different flashlights and, and they, uh, this is the only one that I've ever tried. Once again, you're dealing with something that is made out of military grade metal. So it's extremely dur durable. It's not necessarily a tactical flashlight, but the size of this flashlight is a decent size to put on a smaller gun if you wanted to, if, you, if you're looking to mount something to your gun. And to charge it, you've got basically, so Olight has a special charger for this light. It's a magnetic charger that just taps on the backside. So if it's on the charger and something's going on, you just grab it and pull it and you're, and you're good to go. This one takes more of like a cell phone type charger uh, you've got a little rubber flap that flips up and you stick it in there. I'm not sure, you know, with that rubber flat, how water resistant this is. But this is the flashlight that we use the most on our ranch. And I'm going to explain to you why. After putting all of these out, we put all of these flashlights out and allow people on our, you know, our family members to choose which flashlight they want when they go outside. The kids rarely ever choose that one. This one is a good backup if I hide the other ones. This one um, they would use if these two weren't available. Out of these two, they choose this one. Now, why this flashlight? For one, the high setting is 3,750 lumens. And that setting is a little different than the O-Light. The O-Light has that fixed uh, beam, that beam that goes out and is very straight and, um, and direct. So, and that's how it can reach. Uh, the 2,000 feet that it can reach. This one only has about a 300 foot reach or uh, 150 yards or something like that because it spreads the light out. So when you turn this on, it's like daylight all around you uh, on the high setting, the, the turbo setting. It has three settings below that so you can do low, medium, and high normal flashlight settings. And we have it set up so it's on about a medium setting um, my older son will put it on turbo when he goes outside because he's, you know, scared of the dark. But. The, we try and get them to use it on the normal flashlight settings just 
because the turbo setting is extremely bright. If they point it at your face, it is blinding. And that is where I think, you know, this works as a tactical light. If you're, if you have this mounted to a handgun or whatever it is in your home and you turn this on and you point that gun at somebody, you're going to see them clear as day. You're going to see everything around you clear as day. If you have a camera on your body to film what's going on, it's going to see it clear as day, but they won't see you at all because this thing is that bright. It also has a very interesting setting that I find extremely useful, and that's the firefly setting. So you can see that, that it has a very faint light on there. Now this firefly setting is, so I use a lot of times um, before I discovered the firefly setting, I've had this flashlight for a while and didn't even know about the firefly setting. Um, I used to use just the screen light of my cell phone sometimes at night because I don't want to disturb other family members. And if I turn the flashlight on on the phone, it might just be a little too bright. But the cell phone uh, screen light could also be just a tad bit too dull. Well, this Firefly setting is just a tad bit lighter than that. Now, the Firefly setting is nice if you're out hunting or you're doing anything where you don't want a light that's going to travel a great distance. If you just need to be able to see a small area around you or um, I work on something up close, the Firefly setting is perfect for that type of use. It's perfect for walking through your house at night. When it's really dark uh, in, a, in an, an enclosed environment like that, the Firefly setting puts off plenty of light. You can see where you're stepping. This also has a strobe setting. Um, so the way it works is for Firefly, you would push and hold the button and it turns on the Firefly. Now, if I push and hold the button from that setting, it locks the flashlight, nothing happens. So you have to push and hold it again, put it into firefly mode, and then you can put it in normal flashlight mode. When it's in normal flashlight mode, I can adjust it between low, medium, and high just by holding the button down. So it's a pretty clever little thing. And then to put it in turbo mode, I just click the, the button twice. Now it's in turbo mode. Now to go into a mode of strobe, and for those of you who are uh, sensitive, seizure, seizure sensitive, this is your pre-warning, I'm gonna put this on strobe. When you put it on strobe, you click it three times, and it's, and it's got a great little strobe on there, which again, from a tactical standpoint, up close, self-defense, in a home, that could be a great thing. It could also be a great thing if you're trying to send a distress signal, whatever it is that you're trying to do. So I actually, the functionality of this flashlight versus this $160 flashlight. Now this is only about 50, 60 bucks. Way more functionality than this one. This one has the reach, the throw. You know, it's, it's a bad boy. I'm not gonna lie. I could not live on a farm without having one of these. But this one here, from just an everyday functionality, this is the bad boy. Uh, you can walk out, when we use this to do our chores, we can see everything. You can set it down somewhere and just have this broad light all around you. It lights up the trees as we walk by. It's just a fantastic night. It's just, I mean, for a work light, whatever it is that you're doing, this is a fantastic light. This is the light that you want to own for everyday uses, chores, um, self, home self-defense, whatever it is that you've, you've got going on. 3,750 lumens on the turbo setting is a heck of a lot of lumens. But like I said, the throw's not where this one is. And this one you can, it's got the little spikies. And again, this little i5 TEOS is a fantastic light. If you're looking to have something in your pocket, you need something virtually indestructible if you do the type of stuff I do. And that's where this light comes in. I may actually try and try, test out some more EDC flashlights because I've, I've been so impressed with this one. I never carried a little flashlight before because it never did anything for me. But this little flashlight, it's small, compact, it does, it's bright. This one does, so you can get, Olight does sell a battery replacement to your standard AA battery. And you have to make sure that your flashlight can handle it because a lot of flashlights can't. It'll actually make this little flashlight here just a little more brighter. Um, and and that, flat, that, that battery would be kind of like my next step as far as seeing what this flashlight can really do. Um, but it comes with the AA functionality and it, it works great with the AA. I think you, you pay a lot more for those lithium batteries or whatever they are. So the other great thing about these flashlights 
is that these batteries are, are pretty easy to charge. They charge fairly quickly. And I think that the quality of these flashlights, the batteries, the uh, construction quality, they could last for a very long time if things got really bad. And if you had the right types of resources to charge them, um, it's fantastic, which is where something like, you know, having these power inverters, you can plug your USBs right into these and charge these up, and then you've got flashlights. You can also, uh, with these solar panels, which if, if things go bad, these will run out of battery power, you need a solar panel. But even with this solar panel, I can plug these flashlights directly into the solar panel. I don't even need the inverter and they will charge. So it'll probably be a little bit of a slower charge than off of the inverter. Um, that's why I have the inverter and the solar panel so that I can have the inverter charging during the daytime when I don't need to be using it elsewhere. And then I can plug things into it and charge it much faster because it's, um, it's pushing a stronger current power. Um, and like I said, we have several of these inverters and actually I'm going to be doing some um, giveaways on, um, we've started a GoFundMe uh, campaign for our Meet My Neighbor series. I'll put that link below too. If you join that, it, you don't have to donate money to participate. It's, it's more of like a, we're trying to build a team of fundraisers. So you, you get 10 people to donate a hundred bucks, you get free Merc, um, and then we're gonna have prizes and giveaways. Uh, this Rock Pal setup is one of those giveaways. This is about a $600 setup. So we're giving away, not this one, but an unopened version. We're giving away uh, a lot of fun gizmos like these in that fundraiser. So uh, sign up, become a participant. I haven't started doing the giveaways yet because I've just started telling people about it. And once we get um, some people, oh, obviously the, the $100 initial fundraising is um, kind of an automatic thing. And we'll have other prizes too at just different uh, fundraising levels for people to earn and win. Uh, nothing is going to be random raffle. Everything is going to be earned through hard work. I mean, that's, that's what we're all about, right? So um, definitely sign up for that if you're interested in some of these products, but you don't think you can afford it. You don't have to donate a penny. You just have to find some like-minded individuals who have a couple bucks they want to donate to supporting um, the agricultural industry. Which, by the way, I, in my wildest dreams, I had imagined this happening, but it took me by surprise. Um, and I'm gonna do a video on this. This is, uh, this is a serious topic. It took me by surprise when I read uh, who some people were in, a, in transition teams. And um, I can tell you this, if you voted, if you are in the agricultural industry, a homesteader, somebody who lives in a rural community, <laughs> period, um, and you voted for Biden, it, you, you made a mistake. Uh, I have been studying the members going into uh, the transitional teams for the USDA, and I'm gonna be doing a, a, a video explaining the background of these people because who just, you know, politicians always use these fancy words like incentives and um, community agriculture, but what they don't do is define them. And what I have found is that you can define somebody's intent by who they hire. Um, and now that we can see who people are hiring, um, we can understand more of what the intent is. And uh, like I said, the intent was uh, a lot worse than what I had thought it was when I when I started looking through these people. And when I do my research videos, when I when I come out with that video, I you know I want you to uh, formulate your own opinion um, based on the research that I have done. I'm not trying to force you to think things the same way I do, but I do think that our agriculture um, community, the 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 people growing our food, are are in trouble. Um, and I think that um, private property ownership in rural communities is in serious trouble. So uh, that being said, I hope you guys learned something about flashlights. I hope I made it somewhat interesting to you and gave you some background and knowledge on what would be the best scenario. And again, you know, something like this, it's very inexpensive. Anybody can get it and um, it's the ultimate fail safe. When everything else goes wrong, bees and lanterns.
can go a long way. And a few cotton plants. Something like th these two things here I think would last for quite some time if you had the right technology to keep things charged to be self-sufficient. Anyway, stay tuned. I'll be getting more videos out to you guys. Um, go ahead and it's kind of, I, I'll do a more official video on our fundraiser, but this is your chance to go ahead and sign up and, and get an early start on some of the things that we're going to be doing. And like I said, a lot of this stuff we'll be throwing into giveaways. I have a strategy to what I'm doing. I'm not just, you know, building product relationships for my own benefit. Like I said, we only get 3% on the sales of these. What I'm trying to do is build a campaign to help educate the general public on why agriculture is so important. And in order to do that, I need to generate some interest from all of you. I have to generate some uh, incentives. Uh, we all like the word incentives, right? It's a, it's a process, but I'm trying to go through it as quickly as I can, now, especially now that I see that, that my timeline's much shorter than I thought it was.